Hello everybody, my name is Allison Tiemann. I am the writer and artist for Xenospora, and I'm also the person who had the original idea for Honey Badger Radio. Um, as you probably know by now, I've been banned not just from Calgary Expo, but from all of the events the organizers put on across Canada. Um, well, there's been a lot of conflicting stories on why I've been banned. Uh, the story that we got when we were at the booth and told to leave was that we had been um, harassing panelists um, when I was talking at Women Into Comics. Um, as I put up the recording that we did, um, and you can judge for yourself if we were harassing, because I was with my friend Sage Gerard, who came up specifically to help me with selling my comic. I just wanted to t say a bit about myself and where I'm coming from because there seems to be a lot of hatred being directed towards me by various feminists in media outlets and I can understand you know because I'm, I'm a very difficult I can be a very difficult person to relate to because and and this is just to explain um, and I've recently, a while back, I received, you know, we, we've had seen all kinds of tweets about us, about the Honey Badger Brigade as a group, and one of them in particular was, uh, they, they look really mannish, they look like men, look very masculine from a feminist, and maybe I'd like to address that, because I think in some ways it's right. We have, in the brigade, we have a very gender atypical expression of femininity. I wish it wasn't atypical, but we have a all of us in the brigade have a tendency towards wanting to assume a position of strength and stewardship of other people's vulnerabilities, in this case men's. And that's part of our identity as women, and that's very atypical, because you're really supposed to be the damsel, the victim, as a woman. You're really supposed to say, I'm oppressed by men. And how can you possibly be in a position of helping men's vulnerabilities if you're oppressed by them? And this is something that I think all of us in the brigade just don't identify with as women which makes us very atypical. I guess you could say we are transgender in some ways. And it was a real shock for me. Initially, I registered the booth under my comic because I wasn't sure if I was... I, I do both, so I wasn't sure if I would, would put Honey Badger forward or Xenospora forward until we got so much overwhelming support to bring us to the convention by the people involved in Gamergate and the men's rights communities. And I, I'm drawn to men's rights because I want to be able to help and protect someone. And, you know, I am, I'm bisexual, but predominantly I tend to have relationships with men. I, specifically, I've been married to my husband for about 17 years. And I want that feeling that I can protect him and he can protect me. So I've always been drawn to that, that, that expression of strength. And for me, men's rights is the ability to express strength. And to be strong for someone else, and to steward, to be, to take responsibility for another group's vulnerabilities, men's vulnerabilities, and I don't want that to be separate from being a woman or being feminine. I, I really don't want that to be gender atypical. But to, yesterday, I realized how fucking gender atypical that apparently is. Women like me, women who are not, who don't present as damsels. And we don't believe in damseling, and we don't believe in the ideologies based on damseling, are obviously not wanted, our voices are not wanted in a Women Into Comics panel. Like, we're not wanted there. And you can, again, I'll, I'll link to the stuff that was spoken about in here. Um, why, people have asked why I brought up, why we did the Gamergate thing. I honestly thought that we were still, the the expo organizers would not have a problem with it. I thought that we would have free speech in, in the expo as long as we obeyed all the harassment rules and all of the other stuff that we could support a cause that has spoken to me personally. Um, and uh, I, I've also, you know, been involved with and and that we could, I'm sorry, I'm, this is going to be very rambly, and we could, 
we could present that and just talk to the people who, who came to us. Just pass, just show it, and then just talk to people about who we are and what we, we say think about ourselves. Um, and, uh, well, that was not to be, but I didn't realize that this would happen. I guess I'm a bit, like, I, I think Karen Strawn and Hannah Wallen, I think they would probably call me a Pollyanna, that I, that I would think the best of people and think that we could have gotten through the weekend and I could have sold my comic and talked about this issue. And specifically, I've wanted to fly the Gamergate colors. I was nervous about it because I, lately I've seen so many creators talk, bring me their stories of being harassed and silenced by this particular narrative, um, this very, very focused narrative. It's exactly the same narrative that I don't feel comfortable with as a woman, which is that women are victimized by cultures like the geek culture, the comic, I haven't felt victimized till now. Um, and, uh, you know, so I just wanted to say a little bit more about where I'm coming from. And I, I'm right now I, I'm not in to, to say more about how we were evicted. Cause we've been asked about that as well. Um, I was at my booth for, uh, Friday morning. Um, one of the con organizers came to us. I had a recording device in my hand cause Actually, on uh, thir a Thursday, we actually, or one, Hannah Wallen overheard a conversation about someone wanting to shut us down and pointing to our booth. Um, and so we were a little bit on edge at that point. So, and then we also learned about the Mary Sue, uh, the editor of Mary Sue tweeting us and stuff. Um, so we knew something was going down. Um, and he essentially said, you can't, I won't, you guys got to leave period. And, and he said, I'm not going to tell you why until you turn off your recording device, um, or you put it away. And, uh, and then I did, or I gave it to Hannah and, and, uh, we, we started to walk over to the side entrance that he was motioning for. And he said, no, just her. we just want to talk to the, the manager of the, of the booth. And, uh, and, and there was like four people there talking to, uh, to me. And I said, can I take my husband? And he said, sure. He, he said he allowed that. And then he told me that we were being kicked out because of the harassment that we had engaged in in the panel, which was essentially me speaking my truth about how I feel. And I know that I'm gender atypical. I'm sitting there looking up at a panel of women who know how to damsel. You know, that this is something that they're comfortable with. This is, this is something that they feel like is a part of their life and they, it's like they don't have a problem with it. They can sit there and say, I'm a victim. Um, they can sit there and say uh, and cry and do all of these feminine things that I've never been able to do really well or just I've always had a mental block about it. I've just, it's not, it doesn't come easily to me. So being gender atypical, watching a bunch of women tell me how we're supposed to be and then saying throwing me out because I am the way I am is it, it was fucking shocking and then after after we were told to go we started to we were just milling around just in shock for a bit and then we started to pack and I noticed that there was a security guard and another con organizer laughing just a little bit of ways and at that point I was just like I, I couldn't take it anymore I think that was when it just sort of became real for me. You know, I've been laughed at a lot in my life, so it's I'm sort of used to it. But it's but to be laughed at by him. And you know what? I I will At that point in time I just I, I started to cry. That's the one feminine thing that I do well. I cry very easily and I'm very embarrassed about it. But it was the only other time in my life that I've ever experienced something like that it was when I took a shop class. And all the boys essentially spit on me because I was in the shop class. And you know what? I say that and I could say, oh, I sh they were trying to oppress me. They were certainly trying to exclude me. 
but I have never believed in blaming a group of people. It's not the group of people, it's the behavior. That's the problem. It's never, we never get it right. We always blame the group of people that engaged in the behavior and we never say, no, it's the behavior. Because this was the same behavior 